Hey, how's it going? Tim Brown. Uh, I'm going to be chatting with Benny Fisher live about how he got 500 plus five star reviews. And it's really about the process, not just about, you know, him asking for reviews and stuff like that. But I'm, we're going to give, get some tips uh, from him about how to get more reviews and what kind of process led to that. Um, I believe he's going to be popping in here in a second. He doesn't for some reason. Um, oh, here he is. Boom. So he's about to join. Appreciate you guys hanging out for a second. I think there's going to be some actionable tips. Benny is joining right now. What's up, bro? I What's can't... going on, Timmy Brown? Hey, hey, we got we got uh, the live working. I mean, this is how it's supposed to be. You're on, bro. Talk to me about, talk to me a little bit, just a real quick synopsis of like your story slash just why people should listen, listen, big fish. Where are you guys at? Well, we're a roofing company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I started the company seven years ago from scratch. Uh, very limited resources. Um, went out door to door, got a few customers, then started using some marketing to get more customers and just slowly been building it over the last seven years. We'll probably do nine or 10 million this year. I'm completely removed from the day to day. I am letting uh, my integrator slash president of the company, Rob, run the company. Um, I'm working about four hours a week, uh, leadership meetings and, and same page meetings with him and the leadership team. And I've just been on a journey, right, through this whole process because, you know, I'm a college dropout. I got fired 17 times. You know, I've had a little rocky past and just overcome a lot of adversity and i've always wanted to you know do things the right way and i always wanted to have a company where people felt loved and respected because i feel like i always got disrespected yeah. at companies so like you know that's why i built the big fish contracting company i have a real passion for people and it started with customers yeah and i was really obsessed with that customer experience so i built a process in my company to kind of like kind of like take what you would do from like a Marriott Ritz experience where you have like the, you know, the online stuff, you got the bell guy taking your bags up, people checking in on you to make sure that you're okay. The text messaging services. And I've really just kind of find um, really the details, fine tooth details that I've put into the process on the day of job experience to really wow the customer. And then we built sales processes and marketing around that. Uh, and then we just basically asked the customer for reviews at the end of the job. And because of the wow factor and because of the performance that we put on while we we're doing the roof installation is I think what separates us from everybody else. Okay. Uh, you mentioned, you know, like you're kind of spotty past and, and whatnot. I have a question for you. Why does roofing, because there's a lot of us, I mean, I'm in the roofing industry, even though I'm serving roofers. Why are there, why is it a place that attracts folks that maybe had spotty pass because a lot of us we call like we call it well it's the, it's the it's second we call it the second chance university right yeah. because roofing's a tough roofing's a tough business and roofing's a tough industry um you know nobody wakes up in the morning uh wanting to be a roofer i don't think you know what i mean unless your dad was a roofer and it's in your blood but yeah you know most people yeah. don't grow up and say you know i want to be a roofing i want to be in the roofing business right it, the roofing mm -hmm. kind of finds mm -hmm. us but what i found it's a great vehicle to really make a difference and have an impact on people's lives. And no matter if you're taking care of the customer or taking care of the employee or taking care of the vendors or now even inspiring an industry to like really make uh, really positive changes. There's just a lot of, uh, a lot of upside, you know what I mean? The, the roofing industry is still, I feel like an underserved uh, industry compared to other industries. I still feel like we're a little bit behind the times. Yeah. And I think that it's guys like me, guys like you, some of the speakers you see behind me that really have taken the underdog story and turned it into something really special. And that's what mm. I'm just really blessed to be a part of something great. So I know that you're going to give the full spiel at uh, we're, we're in Omaha this next Wednesday and Thursday with a bunch of great people, including Dustin Beagler, the CEO of Apple Roofing, which is a very large company roll up that's happening in the roofing industry. But um, can you give what what should a roofer do who's watching this one thing that you think could get them more reviews in the next, uh, you know, 90 days? something that you would strongly suggest that they do the most likely thing you think that would get them more reviews? Multiple customer touch points, 
not only during the day of their install to let them know what's been happening and being fully transparent, but also before the install and then after the install, making sure that you take care of them as a customer. But most yeah. importantly, on the day of the job, the performance, because it's easy to sell a job, right? It's easy to go get somebody's money and get the job, you know, whether they, you know, whether you were the cheapest price or whether you were the best salesman, getting the job's one thing, but then delivering on that promise and actually over delivering, right? Under promising and over delivering and wowing that customer to where it was even better than what they thought in their mind when they were buying something. That's the difference, you know, creating raving fans during every interaction is kind of one of our core values at the Big Fish, you know, exceed expectations, right? And, and, and part of that is creating raving fans. Awesome, I love it. Um, any things that like other speakers that you saw, let's say in Orlando that you know are gonna be at the next spot, what, who's, your, who's your favorite speaker besides you, bro, uh, at, at One Industry Events? And besides you? Like, or no, you besides you, you besides you. <laughs> well, I think, yeah. I think it's you, Tim Brown. Yeah, all right, all right. You, no, but seriously, you have the passion and the energy. I think me and you both deliver that high energy and high passion because we're like super excited visionaries and we're, we, we got into this business to really help people, uh, whether it's the customer or the employee, right? And regardless, whatever we talk about, our passion comes out. And I think people are really attracted to that passion and people really want to have that passion. I think it's important for people to have a burning desire because what happens is, is life gets hard, business gets hard. And you have to have something to like get you through those hard times. And, and, and if you're in it, just business, just for the money and for the paycheck, I mean, money comes and goes, right? But like that burning desire to help people, you know, it's always stays for me. And that's how I get through the, 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 the rough times. Oh man. I used to, so I would do, I used to do a live every single Monday morning for like years. And I always, my sign off was always do a little bit more of what you love this week in your business. Cause it's just, yeah, you said passion, and it's just like figuring out ways to like it because there's always tough spots, right? Like, and uh, yeah, just figuring out what do you like about your work, and um, and doing more of that. Yeah, give give us the, give us the. Um, I, I put you up flipping. on the big screen. I, I put you up Maybe. on the big screen. In my home office. Are you able to flip your flip your screen so it's not mirrored? Because right now it's mirrored. Probably um, not. Okay. Well, anyways, guys. Benny is freaking awesome and he's he's giving back to the roofing industry and why? You know, like really, I mean I'm this I'm doing a rhetorical question here because why? Because technically people don't have to, and Benny has made a business and it will feed him and his family as long into the future. But why is he giving back? Ask yourself that question and why. Why is it fun to give back and why, why help businesses that are earlier than yours? I don't know. I'm, I want to leave you it want answer, Do you want me to answer that? You know or what? Just like, I'll let, I wanted to let it simmer for a second just to let people think about that because I see, I see roofers all the time doing this. Like I see a number of roofers out there on Facebook right now just giving and giving and giving and they don't have to. I know it's useful for them to give because when you teach you learn something even deeper but yes okay now that i've let it simmer there for a second how about you benny why do you give back you don't have to do this you got your business you know you're solid why give back partly partly is because like no one gave back to me during those early years of trying to figure out business whether it was when i was working in a car dealership whether it was when I was working at Verizon Wireless, whenever I was in the mortgage business, I never had a leader or a boss actually try to get more out of me and try to inspire me to do more. And I thought like, wow, it's like really selfish of them. Like, why are they not teaching more? Why aren't they giving more? And for me, like, I think it was just because like, I've been like, I feel like mistreated like the first 20 years of my life to the point to where like, I want to make it my passion to be able to give back because, and especially in this industry, because this industry is the one that gave me the breakthroughs, taught me the skills to how to be a better leader, a better partner in life, a better friend, mm. a better dad, like through some of the relationships in the roofing industry, like it's really, really transformed my life. And like, I've been giving back before people even knew who I was, like even locally, like I would help other roofing contractors in Pittsburgh, 
I would, um, I'd even help the supplier. Like, I remember one time when one of my uh, su the suppliers, like he needed a favor and I helped him out, right? Like, mm -hmm. cause I had something at my shop that one of his other customers needed. And I was like, yeah, man, tell him to come on by and grab it, right? It was like a Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. They needed a bundle of shingles. He knew I had it. I said, yeah, tell the other guy to come over and get it. It's like those things, because at the end of the day, you know, I know I always be able to take care of myself and my family. But just in case I can't, too, like, I want to be able to give, 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 mm. just in case something ever would mm. happen to me. Like, let's just say something happens to me. There's 100 people out there that will step up and, and help my son, right? They would help, mm. they would help my family, right? Just because I know I'm giving back, right? I'm giving as much as I can. It's called, I play the game of hot potato. And that's the value game where like, if somebody mm -hmm. gives me something, man, I want to, I want to take that. I don't want that potato to stay in my hand too long. I'm giving it back. Right. Like mm -hmm. I'm like giving 10 X, not an expectation to receive anything, but more an expectation of if I put enough good out in the world, I know good things are going to happen. I, I'm more of like a give first and then receive second rather than some people are like receive first and then maybe they'll mm -hmm. give maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, for me, it's always worked out and it's something I really love to do. So. But what about taxes? No, oh, Jesus. You're trying to create. You're trying to create polarity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so, I'm just kidding. Hey, what's, I, up I had a... hey, what's, what's up with you Minnesota guys always trying to create divide? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just learned from people, you know? No, I, uh, I put a meme out about taxes you guys should check out. But anyways, and, and Benny is, was giving a very great point about how uh, – about how – He's grateful to live in this country, and I appreciate his perspective. Anyways, everyone, thank you guys so much for checking this out. I know a lot of people watch this later, so um, as you guys check it out, check out uh, Omaha's One Industry. And, and we have two more. Um, I know coming up pretty quick here, too, uh, Dallas and North Carolina. I think North Carolina. You, but anyways, you, guys, you guys have one in Charlotte, right? right? Yeah, one in Charlotte. So anyways, appreciate it. So how about this? Hold on. Yes, sir. Can you give me the? Can you give me? You, you're a football guy. Do you remember watching Peyton Manning? Uh, I don't know enough about Peyton Manning to add value to that. But so yeah, when he play. so when so when he would call audibles at the line of scrimmage, his yes, audible sir. was always Omaha, Omaha. Nice. That's that's <laughs> so like, that's Omaha, the only thing I know. That's that's the only thing yeah. I know about Omaha. So like, hey, this, Peyton Manning would scream it from the sideline, yeah. from the from underneath the center. This is a good, like, Midwest, East Coast. Like, if people want to pop up here, I think it will be a good spot for people that are just around. It's not just people in Nebraska. So, if you're in the area, Oh, yeah, I got Missouri. Out. You got Iowa. You yeah. got Kansas. I mean, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, for sure. And even Minnesota is not that far, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. So, yeah. I hope, uh, I hope people will check it out. And, and, Benny, I just appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday, brother, to say what's up. And, um, I, hey, this works. This live thing works so I can do this more. And I'm going I'm to probably do this with a few other speakers that are, that are going to be in Omaha. So, uh, we got a whole two viewers, man. Hey, dude, to me, it's always about later on with these lives because I usually get, like, 100, 200 people that watch it after the fact. So I got an idea. So, here's the deal. Yes, You're sir. still watching this. Put in the comments, Big Fish Rocks, and I'll send you my process for how I get all the reviews. Ooh, I like that, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much for having well, me, brother. Baby. And you have, you have a great Saturday, all right? And everyone, thank you for watching. Right, thank you, guys. All right, bye.